Hello lovely painter people and welcome back to the studio here in Northumberland and today I'm going to do something a little bit different because I'm going to use two mediums in the same painting. I'm going to use watercolours and acrylics but I'm doing them on watercolour paper. It's like I always say you can paint acrylics on paper just like on canvas um, and so you'll see the effects that I get from it. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to use an old photograph, a photograph of a, an old painting that I did quite a few years ago, um, and make it into a snow scene. I mean, it's not a snow scene at all. I don't know if you can see that. Zoom on in, Gail, have a look. And that's the painting I'm going to do. But as I said, it's going to be a snow scene. And the watercolour paper that I'm using is a £140 weight. It's the Langton Rough, the usual watercolour paper that I use. Good sturdy stuff and you can just give it as much abuse as you want and it won't buckle and mess you about. Anyway, on with the drawing and the reading glasses. So I'm going to start off. You'll notice I've only taped the top and the bottom of the paper. That's because I'm going to get the drawing done as much as I want, coming either side and then tape off the sides. There's a chimney. Bit of the front of the chimney. Chimney pot. Here's the roof line. More or less straight, this one. Going down ever so slightly, maybe. Another chimney. Which is a little bit lower than that one. Ever so slightly. And now for the sides of the building. As I always say, tell you, I'm pressing on harder with my pencil than I would ordinarily if I were just by myself painting. That way you can see the outline drawing. Bit of that there. And here I've got another roof coming in front of that an old barn. And a wobbly bottom. Have a wobbly bottom. <laughs> That's corrugated, that roof. So, so wiggly bottom there. And the wall of that. Now some little buildings coming out here. And the end of that barn. One there, one there, and one in the corner there. So this nice dark shadow down there eventually. In here I've got a couple of barn doors. It's just a couple of lines there. Look. And then underneath, uh, actually there's a little chimney there. Nearly missed the chimney. Lots of people ask what kind of pencil I'm using. Ikea. In other words, nothing special. But you don't want anything too heavy. Now, some rough stuff. A bit of rough stuff here and there. dark down there like I said and some more rough stuff here here I've got a tree which is ivy clad right all the way up there nice big tree ivy clad is just a wobbly line with your pencil 
or make it look like ivy when we put the paint on. Don't start and fiddle about drawing too many twigs. Do those with your paintbrush. Just sticking to the main boughs of the tree and the tree trunk. Those are the important bits. And again, the main boughs and the tree trunk. I've just been doing multitasking there. Sorry, multitasking that you didn't see. And I thought men couldn't multitask. I'm drawing and I keep pressing on the phone with my thumb as well. There's nothing going off. That's multitasking in my book. We'll have a few twig, quite a few twigs coming out the side here, but like I said, I don't need to draw those really. Um, now, a little bit of stuff behind that building there. And there's going to be lots of distant trees there. I'll just do a wiggly line to show where they're going to be. And now the path coming out, actually. I'm just Path, sorry, path comes out here. And again, a little bit there. And that's my drawing done. All I need to do now is retape it. Now you can see I've just taped off either side, so really it's more of a portrait format, that one. But the big trees are what takes you down to there. The big trees in the foreground and the path taking you into the picture. I'm going to start off with watercolours and I'm going to get all the watercolours on first before I put any acrylic on. And the acrylic is really the easy bit. So I'm starting off with my big brush, one and a half inch flat. Wet that there like that. Don't worry about the trees, just go through them. The reason why I say that is because if you start carefully going around bits of tree, then you're wasting a lot of time and the paint is drying on you. Once you get paint on, the paint's drying on you while you're fiddling around trying to miss bits out. And you ruin the sky. And that's more important to keep the sky good rather than painting through a few trees, which you can always paint over afterwards. I'm using cobalt blue for this sky. And this is Aquafine cobalt blue, Dale around the Aquafine paints, coming all the way down. There's not much going on in this sky. You notice it's getting weaker as it comes further down. Look, In posh circles, that's known as a graduated wash. What it means is it gets weaker as it's coming further down. Wash out, squeeze out, mop up. We'll have a cloud or two in there. I'm just washing the brush out, squeezing it out and take some paint out of it. So easy. Another one here. As I take the paint out there, look, I'll just drop a bit back in at the base of those, get a little bit of cloud shadow. And now I just need to let that dry ever so slightly. It doesn't need to be totally dry, but just drier than it is. Now, the sky isn't dried, it's still damp here, but that's good for distant trees because 
In the distance, it's nice to have like a, a bit of a mushy top to them. <laughs> mushy top, that's a new technical term. You know, a, a softer effect in the distance. So, then you'll get a sharp edge if it's totally dry. If it's still slightly damp, when you put the paint on, it'll soften in ever so slightly into the sky, giving you a softer effect. So I've got again my cobalt blue, this time with a tiny touch of burnt sienna into it. Plenty of water into it. And just drop in with the tip of my number eight round brush look. And look, you can see straight away, it's just softening on the top. Gives you a nice distance effect. I'm just dabbing on and letting the paint run. Now there's a right time to do that. If it's still too wet, it'll run up like mad. Um, if it's too dry, like I say, you've got a sharp edge. But so just stand to the side of your paper and look at the paper, see if it's still glistening. If the sheen's gone off it a bit, it's ready. Or just touch it. Pulling down a few bits now. These will fall even further back into the distance once I get a stronger foreground in front of them all. Pulling down again. And I'll just let those dry and soften a little bit more before I carry on with the trees and the buildings. Now, still with watercolour and still with my number eight round brush, I've got a little bit of raw sienna here. Plenty of water into this. I'm just going to fill in here. Missing out the barn doors. Which will be nice and dark in a minute. So, a little bit of that on here as well. Don't want much on there. A little bit there. I'm just thinking about where I'm going to catch the light bits. And the light in this one is going to be coming from the right. And I decided that because this tree will cast a nice big shadow across there. Still with the raw sienna, a little bit of that there and there. Now, raw umber. As you know, raw umber is the only brown I carry, both in watercolour and acrylic, actually. but I can get four lovely browns out of that one tube of raw umber. So I've got raw umber as a nice standalone brown. Put a touch of blue into that, and I've got sepia. Put a touch of burnt sienna into my sepia mix, and I've got Van Dyke brown. Take my raw umber and burnt sienna together, and I've got burnt umber. I've got four different browns from one tube. Now one here. And drag down. Once you've done a drawing like this, it's very simple to do the painting. The painting's the easy bit because you've got all your marks in there. You're just filling them in now. It's like painting by numbers without the numbers. <laughs> bit down there. And in between the two buildings. And a little bit on that side of the chimney as well. Now, a little bit more water into that same raw umber. Fill in that bit there. A little bit here. Now, just with a clean damp brush, we're going to soften the lines together. And I shall give the effect of stonework on there in a few minutes once that's dried up. 
Ha! Nobody told me about that chimney there, which I forgot about. Bit of wrong with that. And a little bit of raw sienna there. Now, even in a snow scene, you're going to have some trees, bushes, that have got green. So, I'm going to have hooker's green and burnt sienna here. Like I say, the aquafine paints, they the around the aquafine. They're really, well, you can see, they're really good, strong colours to say that, strictly speaking, they're a student's quality paint. I've split my number eight round brush there. I'm just splitting and tapping on there. Burn that here. Now I'll unsplit it, <laughs> unsplit, by just dipping back into the water. And carefully down there, so it doesn't run into my wall. A little bit more water into it, so that, that gets weaker there. And whilst that's all still wet, I'm just going to go into that with a little bit of burnt sienna. Just burnt sienna. Down the bottom, look. Kind of like warms everything up a little bit. Still with watercolours, and again, raw sienna. I'm still my round brush. I'm just going to do some of the big bits with yellow ochre in this tree here. I'm not fiddling about with the twigs. These are big bits. You've got big bits and twiddly fiddly bits. These are all invaluable technical terms. Yellow walker coming down there and all the way down there. Now, raw umber with a touch of my cobalt blue into it, look. Yeah, darkens it nicely. Whilst that yellow's still wet, that raw sienna is still wet, bring that down there, and the colours are running into each other then. So now, because that yellow, or should I say the raw sienna, which is a nice stony yellow, um, is still wet. As I'm going in with the raw umber, one's running into the other. You see that? And it's giving me a rounded effect to my tree trunk. I always get mixed up between raw sienna and yellow ochre. Because raw sienna is very similar to yellow ochre, apart from it's more transparent. So, if at some stage I've said yellow ochre, I meant raw sienna. Because all of the yellow I'm putting in this is raw sienna. Now, black. But don't use the manufactured black, not in paint, anyway. I use black in the watercolour pencils, but not in the paint. Cobalt blue, burnt sienna, will more or less give me a black there. There you go. And again, while this is still wet, pop on with some dark there, look. You see how that's giving you a rounded look to that tree trunk now? Showing here and there, raw sienna, and again there. Now, still with that same colour, but I'm changing my rigger brush for a second. I want a bit of rough on the side. <laughs> it's nice to have a bit of rough on the side. All I'm doing, look, pop on the side at full length of the rigger brush, number four rigger brush, this one, and just flick out. Look, 
bit of rough growth on the side of that tree, see? A few taps in there. Now, a few twigs coming out of that as well. The Riga brush, brush is a lovely, flicky, bouncy brush. Don't try and hold it at the, head, the end and try and stop it flicking. Let it do its job. A few of those bits up here. But I'm still not going to go mad with loads of twigs. Even though it's a winter tree, I'll show you a way round that in a minute. There. Now there's nowhere near enough up there for the canopy of a winter tree. But don't paint loads of individual twigs. It's time consuming and it ends up messy. I've changed my three quarter inch flat brush brush this time. And that same mix that I've just used for the dark areas there, I'm gonna dab in flat like that, wipe off surplus and just tap on. See? How easy is that? Now, I'm starting off with a little bit of my raw sienna, but this time I'm splitting the brush. Number eight round brush again. Look at the mess I've made out of that. These brushes are about two years old now, and they take this abuse every day of their life. And I'm just stippling on. Actually, just let me show you something about this stippling business. I'm being really hard with the brush in there, but I'm going on really softly on the paper, see? Because it stays split. If you're hard on the paper, it'll close the brush up. You see? So hard in the palette, gentle on the paper. Sometimes you have to be hard, other times you have to be gentle. And at the moment, I'm in touch with my feminine side. Now, hook a screen and burn sienna. Nice and st strong and dark, this. You don't want a summery green. Split the brush again and stick on. This little place, this cottage, it's an old, old farm buildings. Um, and it's on the way to Annick on the Moor Road from here in Northumberland. And a bit more stippling with the green coming up here. Now going back to that nearly black again. Now, still with my round brush, and by the way, this is the round brush that I've just knocked hell out of. Now it's going back to give me a nice fine point. 
and these brushes, this number eight round, I think is £2.50 on my website. <laughs> and this one's, let's say, actually it's probably going on three years old. And they just get abused all the time. Back with the raw umber and blue again. Bit of that, bit of that, bit of the other. <laughs> Come down there. Leaving the raw sienna showing on that right hand side. And again, black, nearly black anyway. You'll get a you'll get a very dark, a very dark colour, just about black, using cobalt blue. But if you wanted a clear, straight black, then use ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna will give you a lovely strong black. Another way of getting a black is alizarin crimson and hooker's green. Those together will give you a different black as well. So you've got a couple of different ways in the colours that I use to get a black. But this is a good dark. Where the tree trunk comes into the ivy bit, just tap on there, look, a bit of digital art. Now back to my rigger brush and we'll have some twiggy bits again. Just drag the brush up. Look. Dance the brush around on the paper and let it do its thing. There. I'm going to go back to the buildings now, still with my number eight round brush, and I'm going to do a little bit of stonework to start with. A few little bits here and there. And that's again with the raw umber which is what I painted the darker side of the buildings in. But this time, with a touch of blue into it as well, so it darkened even more. And just the impression of a few bits of stonework. Don't get stuck into painting loads of indi individual stones. Otherwise, you end up with a building with chicken pox. Just a few strokes here and there. And a few will tell you that that building's made of stone. Now, again, the dark, the black, nearly black, blue, cobalt blue, and burnt sienna. And I'm starting off by blocking those barn doors in, those open doors. Just block them in to start with, and then I'll let those dry. Now, the lip or should I think the stone on the way into that dark. Again, a little bit of raw and plenty of water into it. Look in there. While that's drying a little bit, 
I'll go back to those bushy bits there and I'll just have a bit of burnt sienna actually. Tap that on there like so. Ooh, it's a bit bright actually. I said I'll have just a bit of burnt sienna. I'm going to change that slightly in a minute. Pop it in there as well. Now a bit of blue. Pop that there as well. There, that's better. I can live with that now. All this lockdown stuff, I think it's sending people mad. But hopefully everyone's enjoying all the YouTube videos that I'm doing during the lockdown. I haven't done quite as many as we did in the first lockdown because I haven't had time. Um, because I'm still really busy working. Um, but most people seem to be enjoying it and it's giving them something to look forward to and practice, get painting. Of course, there's always a thumb down, thumbs down as on YouTube, but there always will be. There's always a bunch of sad people somewhere. But most of you seem to be enjoying them anyway. There, that's much better with the glue in now. It's not quite as bright. Now, before I go any further with this, I'm going to use my three quarter inch brush just to bash the path in, bash the path in. So that's raw sienna and a tiny touch of burnt sienna. And I'm just gently, lightly stroking over. Just filling the path in. Don't forget, there's going to be a lot of snow on there as well. But that's just a base wash. Whilst it's still wet, a little bit of raw umber. Still with the three quarter inch brush. A few bits there, look. And then I'll let that dry for a couple of minutes. Then I'm not gonna be putting my hand on it when I'm painting over there. That's the start of the pan. Now, those have dried inside there enough now. So, to give the impression that it's going in. <laughs> That's another technical term, by the way. To give the impression that it's going in, I want a diagonal line there, with the black again, but stronger. Hardly any water into it. There, like so. There. there. You see how you're going into that one now, as opposed to that one. And again here. If the light had been coming from the left, I would have done that the other way around. There. And now, I finish with my very clean palette in watercolours, because now it's time to make it snow. Yay! Now I've changed to my acrylic palette and if you haven't got, if you're painting acrylics and you haven't got a stay wet palette, get yourself one because you're wasting a lot of paint. I had a, um, some feedback on YouTube the other day that was asking, a lady was asking, what can I do with my paint because with acrylics it's drying up on me. It will dry up on you. That's what acrylics do and they'll be stuck in your palette. Have a stay wet, you've got a filament on the bottom of this which you wet, then you put the other piece of paper on the top then you squeeze the paint out, and then when you finish painting at the end of the day, you put the lid back on. And this palette, <laughs> as you can see, this has been on the go now for about probably two months. And the paint is, I haven't squeezed any more in here. The paint is still good and usable. So stay wet palettes, invaluable. So now, time to make it snow. And incidentally, look, my brushes, same set of brushes, I'm not changing my brushes. Um, these are still my Aquafine brushes. I'm starting off with a little bit of white, titanium white. I've got a little bit of water into this, not much. And paint on this roof to start with. Coming down here. And I'm just filling in my pencil lines, like so. 
and a little bit of that here, basically on all the roofs of the building. A bit more water into that actually. There, yeah, that's better. And this is titanium white. With acrylics, the whites can be fairly confusing. That's because there's quite a few of them, it's like oil painting. Stick to one. And titanium white is a good standalone white, but it's also a good mixing white. Now I'm going to bring a little bit down here, like so. And on here. And bring a little bit down into the building as well. And on this one, I'm going to have a little bit more water into the bit, so it flows better. And a few strips of white. You can't really see the difference at the moment, but you will. Any minute now. And again, bring down. Now, cobalt blue. Bit of cobalt blue there. Into the white. And the bottom there. And then just with my finger, merge that a little bit. Bit of digital art again. On here. Strips of the blue and white. A little bit more water into that. Just like I say, this is a corrugated roof. And I'll enhance that even more when I put the shadows in later. And a little bit on here. Touches look. Now, clean paint brush. And all I'm doing is soften the blue into the white, like so. Because, of course, in any snow, you don't want it just white. Have some blue in. Snow in a little bit of shadow or undulation in the snow, <coughs> excuse me, have blue into it. Still with a clean damp brush, I'm now going to go into there a little bit and smooth out some of the ridges. And now for the shadow in the building. Actually, one thing I've forgotten, chimney pots. I'll have a little bit of burnt sienna there, in acrylic. Just a stroke. Shall I have one there? Yes. Now, for the shadow, I've got deep violet or as I call it, Violent Violet. And it's a bit of Violent Violet and Payne's Grey mixed. Nice and dark. And I'll just test that color first before I use it. Yeah, that's about right. And all I'm doing, look, I've got enough water in there. What I'm doing, for the corrugated roof, instead of doing a shadow line, Press the brush, press the brush upward slightly. Bit. Pushing upwards with the round brush. Now, a little bit more water into the same brush full of paint and smooth that down there at the base of the shadow line. Now, I have a little bit of shadow across that roof there. And a little bit coming down there.
still with the shadow mix. A bit of my mix here. And again, clean that brush, soften it down at the base of the shadow line. Still with the same mix. That will cast a shadow in that. And in between the two buildings there. Again, a nice strong line underneath the roof. And soften it down again. Now, more water into the same mix. Look, I'm just putting more water in there. A little bit of shadow on there. A little bit down there. And a few touches down here at all. And remember, this is going on top of dried watercolour paint. A little bit of shadow underneath the chimneys there, look. And a little bit to the left-hand side of the chimney pot. Shall we make this into a very cold day? So I'll have a little bit of white, titanium white, and a little bit of raw umber. Smoke coming out of the chimney, yay. More water into that. some snow on the trees. I'll do the left hand side one first because that's the easiest. <laughs> snow in here, look. On the right hand side. And it's in blobs, don't do a solid clump of white. Now what gives the snow its shape on a tree is to get the shadowed side in. So again, cobalt blue and white. On that side. Now, just with my finger, let's move it in a little bit. See? Now you've got snow in shadow to the left hand side of the tree. I shall do the same snow effect on this tree, but obviously that's on the ivy grown stuff. So I'm going to get my white and then split my round brush, like I did when I painted the ivy. See? And stipple. Now go back to the brush, not split. Got a few touches in here. Again, the blue, cobalt blue and white. This time, a touch more blue than I had in on the last tree. Once I've got it, split the brush. And again, stipple on. So simple. 
Going back to those trees in the distance, a few little touches on there as well, look. Of white with that tiniest little hint of blue into it. And someone who shall be nameless, Gail, said to me, you left a white bit showing there, there's a gap. Well, now there's no gap. It's snow. Now I've changed to my three-quarter inch brush again and starting off with white. A little bit more water into that. And start and bring this down. A bit more water again. And literally just put filling in here. There's going to be some grasses and things. Excuse me in this lot, but that's in a minute. A little bit of blue now. In blue into the white, that is. There's my blue and my white mixed. More blue. A few touches of that down here as well. A bit more water. It's very blue, that, but it'll be fine. A few bits here. Now, just with a clean damp brush. Sorry about the noise. It's important to bash your brush out and clean it. Merge that angle. have a little bit of blue and white in the path as well. Again, this is on top of dried watercolour paint. And that curls round and takes the path off, the path off into the distance. Back to just white. Some white on that side there. And merging. And now I want to put a few bits of grass in. Just here and there. So I've got my hook is green and burnt sienna mixed, a bit more burnt sienna I think. And as I say, all of these colours have been in here for, well, I would say at least two months. A few bits in there. And we'll have a few bits of grass going up. Like. You don't want brilliant bright green grass, get plenty of burnt sienna into that. Grass coming through the snow. And tap on again. And a few bits here. Like so. Flicking up with the big brush. And again, back in with my fingers. Smooth a little bit, soften. One final thing to do now, and that's to put big shadows in across this part. Now to finish this off, I want some shadows, some nice strong shadows. So I've got my Payne's Grey and my Violent Violet mix again. Quite a bit of water into it, but I don't want it too weak, but quite a bit of water into it, so it flows easily enough. And with my three quarter inch brush look, I'm just gonna bring this down here, bring it down there, and then across the part, up. And down. Imagine another tree here, out of sight. Put that in there. And bringing it across. 
and up and down and across again. Now, just with water, soften that in there, look. And now soften it a little bit there, just with water. Now where the path, sorry, where the snowy edge meets the path, got a nice dark edge there as well. Snowy edge, you know what I mean. A bit here, a bit across there, a bit coming down there. That, my friends, will more or less do for that. All I need to do now is take the tape off. And there we go, a very simple little snow scene with watercolour and acrylics. You notice the way I worked throughout that. I got all the watercolours on first, painted around the picture, got all the watercolours on, then let them dry and then straight in with the acrylics. And it, it is that easy to just make it snow afterwards i'm just fiddling now it is that easy just to make it snow afterwards with the addition of the acrylics and the brushes that i used of course aquafine brushes again like the aquafine paint aquafine brushes i only ever use four anyway there's my one and a half inch flat which i use for the skies my three quarter inch flat the number eight round and the number four rigger and as you saw this is the big advantage of these brushes. They're so sturdy, I've used them for my watercolours and for my acrylics. I haven't changed brushes. And as I said, these are going on three years old now. And they get that kind of abuse that you've just seen. So, Aquafine brushes. For a lot of people who worry about snow scenes and leaving white paper if you're just doing it in watercolours, I can do that. I've been painting for 105 years. But I know it worries a lot of people to paint snow scenes in watercolours. Nothing wrong with getting some, some acrylics out as well. Make it snow. So, all the paints that I use there, they're the Aquafine for the watercolours. There's some Aquafine paint. And these are, how much are they? £1.80 a tube? £1.80 a tube on the website. That's the raw sienna there. And with the acrylics, the System 3, and even those big tubes like that, they're still only £2.70 a tube. System 3 acrylics, all day around the equipment that I'm using. And it's really good quality stuff, this. Even though it's not expensive, it's good quality stuff. The, there's a couple of books here. Well, to start with, the paper that I use is the Lantern Rough. I use bigger pieces than this. And I just get a, a demonstrator's pack of paper and I chop a sheet in half and that's what I'm using. But this is the paper, Lantern Rough. And there's a couple of books here. This one is just packed with tips and techniques. Charlie's Tips, Chop, Charles Evans Pocketbook for Watercolour Artists, that's the one. It used to be Top Tips. <laughs> and this, there's also a snow scene in this, a big landscape snow scene. Um, this is a very handy little book. It's a hardback book. But at the back of it, it's got watercolour paper with the drawings on. You don't have to use that, but it's a good reference to see the drawing. But if you want to use it, then the drawing's done for you. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.